Ableton Sampler is undoubtedly one of my favorite tools. When I finally learned how to use it, it really opened up a world of creative possibilities. It's like it injected something organic into my music. If you don't know what Sampler is, it's basically the Simpler's big brother in Ableton. There is actually a bunch of patches or presets included that you might have used with it already but you've never really delved in to see how it actually works. Here's a few examples of what you can actually do with Sampler. Now, when you first glance at it, you might be like, well, this is a super complicated looking thing. Like, what does this do? What does that do? What does this thing over here do? So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna cover all of the main features in Sampler under 15 minutes so that you can understand how to use this instrument to the best of its ability. But please stick around, that way you'll be able to get all the information necessary to actually learn this synth. So without further ado, let's get straight into Ableton's Sampler. All right, so what you're gonna to wanna to do here is load Sampler into a new MIDI track. You can just click and drag or double click to load it up. Now this is the default interface. Now, there's no point in teaching you anything I'm about to, about to teach you here without actually loading a sample in. So uh, if you're following along, just drag any sound in for now. It doesn't really matter what sound, as long as it's something with audio, which is what you'd hope. So this is a random sample. Let me just turn up the volume. Cool, so let's have a brief overview of everything within the sampler. All the sections of the instrument are available to access at the top here. So you've got the zone section, you've got the sample section, the pitch oscillator section, the filter global section, the modulation section, and lastly the MIDI section. And then lastly, we'll get into some more advanced features. So let's start here. So here you've got the sample display. This is where you drag in your samples as I've just done previously. Now, if you right click, you can do a bunch of things to the sample, like show where it comes from, normalize the volumes or the pans for both channels. You can crop it if you've selected a certain thing, which I'll get to in a second. And you can zoom in and out from the certain region that you've selected. So what you can do here, as you can see, this is the start point, this is the end point. Now they're both toggleable down here as well if you prefer to fine tune it that way. For now, let's bring it back to where it was. Actually, I'm bringing it back up here so we just have this small segment. Now, what you can also do is reverse the entire sample. That way, it's going to play from the end point back to the start point rather than the other way around. Now, snapping attempts to put these starting and end points onto a zero crossing, which is basically just a point like that, as you can see, that crosses the center line of the amplitude. Here is the sample file that you can actually hot swap up in the browser here, as you can see that enables hot swap mode. Changing the root, basically you're assigning the original sample's pitch here. If you drag in a sample that's in E, you will wanna change this to E or E3 or E2, whichever octave it's on. That way, all the notes you play on the keyboard will be in its correct pitch, which is something that the simpler doesn't have. Now you've got detune, which is pretty self-explanatory. But one of the really cool things about Sampler is scale. Now scale basically uh, is the key tracking scale for this sample. So 100% is normal uh, distribution across the keyboard. Whereas if you put it to zero, for example, it'll play the same pitch no matter what note on the keyboard you play. So I'm playing multiple notes on my computer keyboard there, but it's all playing the same note. Changing, you can go negative with this or up to 200%. Of course, you've got the volume sample and the pan, pretty self-explanatory. We've already been over those. And then you've got sustain mode. So if you're not familiar with what an ADSR envelope is, the sustain part of the ADSR envelope is the volume uh, after it's had its attack stage and its decay stage. Now what the sustain loop mode determines is how it's gonna play through the sample while the note's being held down. So by default, it will just end at the sample, but you can change it to sustain loop mode here and I'll shorten this to show you the example. It introduces a new bracket here, which is the end loop point. Let me turn off reverse so you can see what I mean. It basically starts from the start again. This one, let's zoom in, you can see it goes back and forth. And this link button here sets the sample start point to the loop start point. 
so that no matter where you move this, those are the same. It's really handy if you want the start of the sample when you first start playing it to be the same point where it loops from. Now, secondly, release mode, once you've let go of the note, determines the action of the loop. Uh, it basically creates a second loop. Now, by default, it's off, but it functions very similarly, but it actually creates, as you can see here, a second looping point. So if I press this here, and I will actually add some release so you can actually see what happens here and we'll get to that in a second. You can see now it goes all the way through there and they behave similarly uh, as the sustain loop mode. So either back and starting again or back and forth. With all these points here, you can customize the loop points on the display or with these values here, similar to the ample start and end selectors there. You can also introduce a, an amount of crossfade uh, for the sample loops. You can actually detune the sustain loop and the release loop as well. This doesn't detune the whole sample just while it's uh, looping. You can see at the beginning there it was on pitch and then when it started looping it was slightly higher. That's a really cool way to add some uh, kind of organic sounds to your sample. Now you can interpolate the samples pitch in different ways. This is good if you've got pitch correction. Obviously best interpolation is better quality, but it uses more CPU. Lastly, you've got the RAM option here. This basically allows the sample to play from RAM, which is slightly better uh, and faster. Although obviously RAM is a limited resource, so that can be a bit more strain on your computer. Vertical zoom zooms in on the waveform to a certain amount. That's just nicer to see what you're working with. And you can choose the display option here, uh, which selects different channels. So that's both left and right. That's the mono channel, that's the left, and that's the right channel. And that pretty much covers the sample part. So let's move on to the pitch and oscillator. These are pretty straightforward. You've actually got an oscillator that you can use within sampler that modulates the original sample with FM or AM. Now it functions as a very similar ADSR envelope, so I'm not gonna go over how that works, but you can also change the slopes of them by pressing on this little thing there or you can actually customize it in the display however you prefer to work. It's got an initial amplitude, a peak amplitude, and an end amplitude if you wanna customize those as well. As well as a bunch of loop options, uh, beat and sync are on time. Sync is just synced to the host's tempo and timing. Loop loops the uh, from the point here to the final decay point back and forth, and trigger just this kind of a free form loop uh, you can choose the modulation uh, waveform like sine, saw, square, triangle, or noise, the volume of it. And you can also have it as a fixed oscillator frequency. Really fun stuff. And you can also obviously map the volume of this to the velocity of the note that's being played. Down here, you've got a pitch envelope. I turn this off. Pretty straightforward. Once again, you've got an ADSR envelope with the same controls and same looping functions. Obviously, this is applied to the pitch of the whole sample. You can also add spread, which adds kind of a 2D, it adds like a 2D tuned voices effect to both, um, to the sample. So it's kind of more of a stereo sound. You can obviously transpose the entire sample, detune the entire sample and zone shift, which shifts the zone of the sample, which we will get into once we cover the zone bit. And you've also got portamento and glide and you can customize the time there if you wish to do so. Next, we've got the filter section as well as the global controls. Here you've got your general filter controls, very similar to how the auto filter in Ableton functions. You can customize it in the display or play around with the frequency resonance there. Different circuit types as per the this, the auto filter, you've got the slope types that you can change and map it to both the velocity and the keys that are being played. Obviously certain filter types have drive as well. Uh, you've also got an envelope for the filter, which can add those kind of nice plucky sounds, uh, especially with a fast decay. ADSR envelope functions the same as all the others. You just control the amount by playing around with that. And you can also obviously mess around with the display if you prefer to work that way. You've also got the shaper section, which adds distortion, which is cool. Um, you can actually change the signal path by pressing on this arrow. So the filter either goes into the shaper or the shaper either goes into the filter. 
and you can customize between these four distortion types, which is super fun. Lastly, you've got the global section here, which obviously just controls the overall volume of the sound. And this is the overall volume ADSR envelope. You've also got pan controls. You've got random pan, which is similar to simpler. You've got a time control, which either accentuates or does the opposite, changes the time of the envelopes across the entire um, device, essentially. So that way you can kind of mess around. And you can also map that to the keyboard so that higher keys will have higher times. You can also change the polyphony here with the amount of voices and whether it's going to re-trigger all the voices every time you play a new note. All right, guys, so let's hop on into the next section, which is the modulation section. One of my favorite sections here, there's so many cool, creative, dope stuff you can do to sounds. So first of all, on the left here, you got this auxiliary envelope. This is one of the coolest features um, about Sampler and it's awesome because it's in addition to the filter envelope and the volume envelope. So it's really cool and you can map it to two sources. So you got the list of sources here and you just select the amount on there, it can go positive or negative. So once again, it's the exact same controls for the normal envelope. So for example, let's try doing it with the shaper amount or something. It like adds either distortion to the tail or you know, you can go for something like the time. So that's the aux envelope. You also got three LFOs. Now LFO one's slightly different to the other two uh, because it's very similar to the simpler LFO in the sense that you can either do volume, filter, pan, or pitch modulation. You've got the wave selected there, which is pretty standard, sine, square, triangle, saws, and noise. It can be synced or freeform hertz. You also add a bit of attack to the LFO. That way what it does is it just blends in the LFO over one second in this case. You can also re-trigger it so it starts from the start point every time a new note's played and you can offset it. Once again, key map. Now LFO two and three are different because whilst they share a lot of the same controls, same waveforms, instead of having these four sections down here, uh, it's got two, which like the auxiliary envelope, you can map to any control on this list here and you can control the amount over on the side there. In addition to that, you've also got this stereo, it's actually a stereo LFO. So you can actually, first of all, change the phase of the two LFOs are for left and right channel. And you can change it to spin mode, which basically increases the frequency of one of these LFOs uh, in relation to the other. So you get that kind of over time, it widens, which is a really nice effect. And this is the exact same process with LFO3 and you can have up to four modulation sources with two different LFOs that way, plus the original. Lastly, you got this expression MIDI panel. Basically, you can map all of these modulation sources to different MIDI parameters like your keyboard, if the other options weren't enough for you already, velocity, uh, the off velocity after touch, uh, which is the uh, pressure applied during the pressing of the key, which some MIDI keyboards have, mod wheel, which is pretty self-explanatory foot control if it's applicable, if you've got that in your setup and pitch bend. Obviously pitch bend obvious, like by default does control the pitch. So you can control that range here. By default, it's five semitones, but you can go up to 24 either way. So obviously you've got two destinations for all of these as well. And you can control the amount negative or positive. Lastly, and this is probably where the real power and uh, difference comes in sampler as opposed to simpler is this zone mode. Uh, and basically there's three types of zones. There's key velocity and selector. Uh, what this allows you to do is basically assign different samples in sampler to different keys on the keyboard. So I could drag in a second one and we could actually customize on this key selection here, which notes uh, are gonna trigger what sample. You can see there are two different sounds there. And on the keyboard, playing different notes are gonna trigger those sounds differently. The idea behind this is if you've got like, say a recording of every note on the scale and you wanna drag them into here, like grand piano notes. Uh, you know, if you wanted to drag all them in, 
Uh, a lot of the times it does assign them pretty pretty automatically. Uh, if you don't have it, you can select all the notes by holding shift, right click, and you can also sort them different in different ways, as well as distribute the ranges across the keyboard, which is really cool. Uh, and you, can, as I said, you can assign different, like for example, the harder you play, it'll play a different sample. And then this is also the selector option, which is actually a control that you can map so that if you change the MIDI parameter, it will actually select different uh, notes, which is good if you've got like, for example, multiple samples that you wanna play in a live performance and you wanna switch between them without having to actually add a complete another sampler. This is the crossfade type between the different samples when it fades between them. There's actually a second bar above this, similar to how like drum racks or instrument rack selectors will function. You can actually crossfade between samples so that certain notes or velocities will play one sample or two samples at the same time, but crossfading between them. You can auto select depending on what notes being played. It'll select the sample down here. As you can see, selecting a different sample changes the sample down there, which is cool. And that are, is basically all of the main functions of Sampler. Awesome, now we know how to actually use Sampler. What about making sounds from scratch with it? If you click the link in the description, It'll take you to a page and then you'll be able to get access to a private video of me showing you how to use these techniques to actually create sounds with Sampler. So just click that in the description or up in the corner there. And if there's something you didn't understand from today's video, please just leave a comment and we'll respond to you. Or if there's any other tips or tricks that you use that you, um, with Sampler that I didn't include in this video, let everybody know there as well. I'm sure everyone will really appreciate that. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you want more educational videos and content. And lastly, if you wanna share this, like it so YouTube shows this to more people and share it on social media or with your friends so that they can get access to this information too. Hopefully you have a good day and we will see you in the next one. See ya.